Welcome to this edition of National Focus. I'm your presenter, Tasia Flosak. Coming up, government launches the Small Business Development Center initiative. China's ambassador to Dominica talks Dominica-China relationship. And Catherine Pelte of Point Michel joins Dominica's esteemed list of centenarians. Stay tuned for details of these and other headline stories. Did you know the Caribbean Court of Justice is two courts in one? The CCJ has two functions, an original jurisdiction, which deals with your right to move between CARICOM countries freely and your right to move your money and your business. This is the basis of the CARICOM Single Market and Economy, CSME, and the revised Treaty of Chagaramas, and an appellate jurisdiction to hear appeals from courts of those countries which decide to use it as their final court of appeal and no longer go to the Privy Council. All CARICOM member states who have signed the agreement establishing the CCJ are members of the CCJ. Thanks for staying with us. Small business owners in Dominica now have a greater chance of running successful business. Through the help of small business development centers, entrepreneurs will now have access to more structured help. A press conference was held on Friday to launch the initiative. GIS's Nisha Charles brings us this report. Running a successful small business takes not just the drive and good idea of the entrepreneur, but training, capital, and the help of a structured organization. Government, being fully aware of this, is taking a step to grow these small businesses in Dominica. On Friday, the Ministry of Commerce, Enterprise, and Small Business Development, along with the Organization of American States, the OAS, the U.S. State Department, the University of Texas on San Antonio, UTSA, and the National Development Foundation of Dominica, the NDFD, launched a Small Business Development Center initiative. The center would provide services such as business plan development, manufacturing assistance, financing packaging and lending assistance, among other things. The Honorable Minister for Commerce, Enterprise and Small Business Development, Rosalind Paul, says the center will ensure a strong ecosystem for enterprise development. The micro and small business sector has proven itself in terms of its continued contribution to national development, but indeed has further potential to create and expand employment opportunities, to develop entrepreneurial skills, enhance market opportunities, and encourage export promotion and import substitution. This is why increasingly the Dominican Labour Party government places focus on small and medium enterprises through support to existing private sector entities such as NDFD and the Aid Bank, the establishment of DYBT, the small business unit prior to the establishment of the new Ministry of Commerce, Enterprise and Small Business Development. The various representatives were in Dominica from March 23rd to the 27th to deal with the necessary logistics and technical assistance required to implement the center. The initiative, which began in 2012, is being undertaken in five pilot countries, Dominica, St. Lucia, Belize, Jamaica, and Barbados. The OAS wants to see this sort of economic development take place within the Caribbean region. The hope is that at the end of it all, we would be able to lay the necessary groundwork, the necessary framework for SME support and development within Dominica with the hope of building on that framework, building on that, um, that, that support with other in, in, uh, in interventions, I guess, um, later on to ensure that we develop and we, we, we build this ecosystem that we are so looking forward to trying to develop. The U.S. State Department is particularly enthusiastic about targeting women and young people to help develop their business skills. Women we single out because, you know, data shows us that most MSME owners are women. And youth because we all know that 
unemployment is a problem. And so, and there's a lot of creativity, a lot of energy there, so we just need to tap into that and, and help facilitate sort of um, these, po these opportunities um, to give them the skills and, um, and, and confidence to, you know, build a better future. But what does this mean for small businesses? UTSA representative Albert Salgado explains. We all need that structured mechanism to where it's clear and simple uh, to our SMEs of where to go to try to grow their businesses. They're not asking for a handout. They just really want a segue. Uh, they want a place to, uh, to go and get information, okay? Uh, talk to the right people uh, to grow their business. And while we can come up here and talk about projects and programs, it's about the SME development. Um, and I think uh, the structure that's uh, being talked about here today and the mechanism uh, that's being talked about today is certainly something that will um, uh, reap benefit to the SME uh, community uh, uh, here in uh, Dominica. The Pilot Center for Dominica will be done in collaboration with the NDFD, which already provides support to small businesses in Dominica. Executive Director of the NDFD, Claytus Joseph, says the center will deliver more precise services and assistance. We want to see a real robust and vibrant and strong small business sector. If we can do that, if we can build that, if we can achieve those objectives, we will be well on our way towards the creation of more jobs for all people, more opportunities for all um, entrepreneurs, more um, opportunities for all small, micro and small enterprise people. And this, again, will redound to the success of us by creating jobs, creating wealth, um, creating um, products which can help to, to um, substitute exports, which can, can um, help to increase the level of imports, which will subsequently add up to the increase of foreign revenue inflows, reduction in the balance of trade. You know? And so there, are, there is benefit for all across all sectors, both micro and macro sectors of the economy. When the pilot center is established, the ministry hopes that up to two more centers will be established across the island. For GIS News, I'm Nisha Charles reporting. Thank you, Nisha, for that report. In more news, China's ambassador to Dominica, His Excellency Li Xiaoning, is pleased that Dominica and China continue to share amicable relations. The ambassador was speaking on site at the soon-to-be-complete housing scheme for San Suve residents who were affected by a landslide in 2010. The project, which commenced in October 2013, is costing government over $2 million, with $1.3 million donated as a courtesy grant from the People's Republic of China. The ambassador says the project is just one example of the friendship the two countries share. I think this is a reflection of uh, the friendship between our two countries and also the uh, deepening and expanding cooperation between our two countries. Um, we see that in many areas, economics, in economic, in, in, uh, in infrastructure, in culture, in uh, government, government people to big people exchanges, and such, also in international arenas uh, on issues of multilateral global importance. Uh, I think this relationship will continue. Uh, we just celebrated our 10th anniversary of our diplomatic relations last year. We just passed the 11th uh, anniversary uh, just a couple of days ago. Uh, I think our, uh, our relationship has a very bright future. In His Excellency Li says he is looking forward to increased cooperation. I think uh, a couple of things that, uh, that I, I, I think I would... Uh, pay most of my attention to is uh, to see, uh, first of all, to see this relationship moving forward. Um, uh, Prime Minister once said that uh, although our diplomatic relations was, on, was only 10 years old, he said the last year, that uh, the fact of the matter is that our relationship looked much mature and closer than that. And I fully agree with the Prime Minister on that. Uh, I think my job here is to see to it that uh, I do the best of my to the best of my abilities to facilitate the communication, facilitate uh, uh, exchange, and to see this relationship um, moving forward in all the areas. 
Meantime, the Honorable Minister for Housing, Lands and Water Resource Management, Reginald Austri, says his ministry is thankful that the People's Republic of China has facilitated government's housing revolution program. It shows a demonstration of, of friendship and respect and the benefits that Dominica are deriving from having established relationship uh, with the People's Republic of China. And on behalf of the government and the people of Dominica, I really want to extend my thanks to the ambassador and his team and to convey to his capital our great appreciation for uh, this very, very handsome donation as far as relieving the plight of the people of Dominica uh, is in fact concerned. Um, we've always told the people of Dominica that we entered in that, in that relationship um, with our eyes wide open. We knew uh, that in this global crisis, where our support would come from an economic standpoint and for infrastructure and other development. And the Chinese have been true to their word, in fact, that every promise that they have made to the people of Dominica, they have, in fact, delivered on that promise. According to Honorable Austri, the San Suve housing project represents government's commitment to the San Suve people and, by extension, the nation. He says the second component of this project will include the construction of 11 homes on the West Coast for nationals affected by the 2011 Hurricane Ophelia. The Honorable Minister indicated that funds for this project have already been allocated. Dominica and China formally established diplomatic relations on March 23, 2004. You're watching National Focus. Still to come, Catherine Pelte of Point Michel is Dominica's newest centenarian and youth officer Valencia Webb says goodbye to the public service after almost 30 years. Stay with us. Welcome back. The Nature Island continues to produce centenarians who still have youthful vigor. The newest to join the list of these esteemed individuals is from the community of Point Michel. GIS's Kimani Saint-Jean brings this report. Meet Catherine Pelletier of Point Michel, Dominica's newest centenarian. Da Catherine, which is how she is affectionately known, was born on March 28, 1915. Her mother passed when she was only seven and so she was raised by her aunt. Her father, though, lived to be 100. Though Mrs. Peltier bore one child, she raised many as she and her daughter, Bertha Peltier, dedicated their lives to fostering children in the Point Michel community. She is also very alert and even remembers vividly her first communion experience and the names of the nuns who taught her in 1922. Those who know her well says she is characterized by her kindness and serene spirit. In the neighborhood, she is never known to quarrel or raise her voice. All who know her will tell you that Da Catherine is a warm and loving person and a very quiet lady. Isn't it true? Yes. Her menu is simple and she fusses over nothing. Her community came together on Sunday to celebrate Palm Sunday and to begin the birthday celebrations for Mrs. Peltier. Mass was also attended by His Excellency the President Charles Savre and Mrs. Savre, the Honorable Minister for Social Services Catherine Danielle, and the Honorable Member for Parliament for the area Ian Pinard. Prayers were lifted up on her behalf and Mrs. Peltier was honored with a special plaque from the parishioners. Following the Mass, the celebrations continued with an official lunch at the grounds of the St. Luke's Primary School. A well-beloved Mrs. Peltier received words of love and commendation from family. Growing up, my mo I never knew my mother to be. She's a loving person, a peaceful. I never knew how to have any problem, no trouble with anybody. Not even a little hmm, with nobody. 
and so on. And then she would take care of any child I would bring at home, she would welcome them. I raised up a lot and then she was taking care of all these children. Very hard working person, she likes to work, she likes to wash, she likes to garden in, she doesn't like to stay. I, up till today, like this morning, she already cleaned her bathroom and the bathroom and so on and these things. So, and so on. So, <laughs> so she said if she stay idle, her fingers will get stiff. So she wants to work and so on. She's washing and so on, cleaning my yard, she does it, everything. I had the privilege of being raised with her. Uh, that's where I slept every night. That's where I had my breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, before I could read, I remember her sitting on a chair and uh, sitting me in, her, in front of her on the chair and having the book in front of me and reading and teaching me to read. I also learned from her tremendous patience. Uh, somewhere, whenever something goes wrong, she would always sing a little song to me. <laughs> Whatever you do to the least of my brothers, that's what you do unto me. Always seem to just calm you down. Uh, just puts everything in perspective. I have fond memories of being in the house by Auntie Barbara, going and sit down and talking with Dr. Catherine, who was very kind, very loving to me. And she always had nice, pleasant things to say about me. She always asked about our family. Can't think of a nicer person to actually reach a hundred. And from the Honorable Parliamentary Representative for the Sufre Constituency, Ian Pinard. Today, I am here 43 years and it's the first time I have known that we are celebrating a centenarian. And I really want to say, Dr. Catherine, we are really happy to be here celebrating with you 100 years. Let us give her a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Anytime you hear a hundred, you know something great. In cricket, when our West Indian batsmen score a hundred, we know that's a good thing. And today, we are here in Point Michel celebrating Dr. Catherine 100 year. The Honorable Minister for Social Services, Catherine Daniel, along with her presentation, brought a letter from the Honorable Prime Minister, Roosevelt Skerritt. This is a man who really loves old people, and the young also. And I think he has placed a lot of programs for people. God knows what he will come up with. And in this basket, one of the gifts that we have for you is the $500 a month um, benefit that you'll receive and also your free gas. And His Excellency Charles Savre also made presentations from the Office of the President. The Office of the President officially wishes on behalf of the government and the people of the Commonwealth of Dominica and on my own behalf and Mrs. Sovereign, my wife who is here, I wish to extend to you, Mrs. Peltier, my congratulations and good wishes on the occasion of the attainment of your 100th birthday on Saturday, yesterday, the 28th of March, 2015. And in recognition of this, uh, the, I wish to present you uh, with a card and the official letter from the president. A strong, alert, and vibrant Catherine Peltier brings to 30 the number of centenarians living on the island. For GIS News, Kimani Senjang. And that's the English news coming up, your tip of the day. Wash your hands. I am Adora Tuse, health educator from the Ministry of Health. Proper hand washing protects against the spread of many common illnesses and germs. Wash your hands often with soap and water, or you may use a hand sanitizer. Remember, clean hands save lives. Protect yourself. A message 
from the health promotion of the Ministry of Health. Today's tip of the day is about the benefits of drinking water. There are numerous benefits to drinking water, from keeping healthy and hydrated to clearing up acne. You may already be getting some of these benefits without even knowing it. Water contains many valuable minerals and nutrients that your body needs to function properly. Drinking water before bedtime is one of the best ways to help your body store those nutrients and minerals. You need to stay healthy and strong. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash gisnewsdominica and follow our Twitter at gisdominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscast on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. From all of us here on the GIS News Desk, I'm Tasia Flosak. Thanks for watching and join us again next time on National Focus.